today you're watching Shape Up with Sue Daly. Seems like Tuesdays come around very quickly these days. So far we've covered hexagons, six pointed stars, equilateral triangles and I want to show you a couple of other shapes that will go together with those and they will make up very different shapes and they'll all make up a two and a half inch hexagon or many other different shapes that you might want to do. First of all um, we worked with the hexagon. So we have a hexagon here we worked with a six-pointed star and we've worked with an equilateral triangle. Okay, so if you were to put these together, so we've put in the past, we've put these little uh, six-pointed stars together to make a little six-pointed star shape there. You can then add in the same shape again around the outside edge to make a hexagon that's going to look like that. So if you put all of those pieces together you'll end up with a hexagon. We've worked with the equilateral triangle and six of those will make one of these hexagons as well. Today I want to show you a couple of other shapes that will do exactly the same thing but it's interesting that there's many many shapes that will go together to make up the final the end result being a, a hexagon. So if you were to use a half a hexagon, so this is a half a one and a quarter inch hexagon, so this is a one and a quarter inch hexagon and it's a half hexagon cut through the middle from point to point. Now if you were to put those around the outside of your hexagon with the shortest edge facing in, you would then make a two and a half inch hexagon like that, you've made exactly the same hexagon but you've pasted it. You can also use the same shapes by putting those hexagons, turning them around and adding them around the outside edge with the long side going in. And again, you'll make another two and a half inch hexagon. And a small equilateral triangle, and you can pop those around the outside edge. So we've got a one and a quarter inch hexagon and a one and a quarter inch equilateral triangle. Remember that measurement is a side measurement. Put it all the way around to make a different type of a star. And then you can put your six pointed star in around the outside and again you're going to make the same hexagon. So I always say it's just like a jigsaw and it is. If they go together they'll sew together. So there we have Another hexagon, two and a half inches down the side, two and a half inches down the side. So we can also use a six pointed star and some parallelograms. Parallelogram is a shape where the sides are parallel to each other. Just lay them out like that. Again, you'll get a hexagon. So an easy way to work out whether they're going to go together or not is maybe you get the finished size of the hexagon that you're looking for. You can pop it down in front of you and you can lay your shapes on top just to see if they're going to fit. And that way you'll know exactly whether it's going to work for you or not. So you can lay your shapes out directly on top of your hexagon. So that's an easy way. What I've got here is a sample of some of these shapes that I've put together um, so you can see um, after they've been sewn up. This is a, um, 
a sample of mine and it's it's uh, been through the wars it goes everywhere people like to pick it up feel it rip the paper out the back but it's a great sample for me I'll never finish it because it's one of those samples that people just like to get their hands on so here we've got your equilateral triangle here six triangles make the hexagon over here we've got your half hexagons and your full hexagon like I showed you just a minute ago these two shapes here to make the same hexagon over here it's exactly the same we've done exactly the same as this one over here this one here we have a two and a half inch six pointed star one and a quarter inch six pointed stars and equilateral triangles the end result of all of these hexagons is a two and a half inch hexagon so we're working with shapes that are two and a half inches on the edge or one and a quarter. Half of two and a half is one and a quarter. So by putting those two measurements together, you're going to end up with your hexagons working out. Over here, you can see a very different one. We've got equilateral triangles, six pointed stars, half hexagons. So there's many, many shapes, hundreds of, sh hundreds of designs you can make up with using these simple shapes into these hexagons. The other thing that um, we have at Busy Fingers is in the beginning we started with a thing called playing with paper packs. Now these were for people who maybe weren't sure whether they'd want to go down the English paper piecing journey or not. So it was an inexpensive way of trying English paper piecing. So we made a number of different packs, 40 actually, so that's um, quite a number. Um, this one here is pack 3 and it's just working with your hexagons and your six pointed stars. So it's like a grandma's flower garden. This one here is pack six and it's using exactly the same shapes. Your hexagons and your six pointed stars. So you're making the star and you're surrounding it with hexagons. This is um, pack six. So there's many, many different um, ways you can put just those two shapes together to make different designs. We have pack four. Pack four uses those same shapes, the hexagons, six pointed stars, equilateral triangles, and also in this particular one, we've got a jewel shape. Now a jewel shape is exactly the same as a six pointed star, except the bottom of it is cut off. It looks like that. So the base of it will be like a hexagon. So it's actually like a hexagon with an equilateral triangle on the top. So really it's just a six pointed star with the bottom cut off. Okay, And that shape we have in this little packet. So there's four different shapes in there, makes multiple, multiple designs. Again we've got this one here which is pack eight and it has the same shapes in it. Now you can make different size um, ones of these. These are all working with one and a quarter inch and two and a half inch. However, if you were working with one inch and two inch or one and a half inch and three inch, you can create the same design just in a different size. This particular pack here is pack number five. We used to call it cooking sherry. Um, in the beginning when um, I first started doing English paper piecing, which was many years ago, this was one of the first designs we created but it was a little bit daunting for a lot of people. Um, as you can see in the instructions, there's a layout there of how to put everything together. So if you just work on one section at a time, like a jigsaw puzzle, you can create something very beautiful. So that's pack number five. And again, it's using the same shapes, your hexagon, six pointed stars, equilateral triangles, dual shapes, um, and your, um, yeah, I think that's it. Four shapes or five shapes in there. And in your little packets, you're going to get a little bag of all your different shapes, 50 of each, and then a template for each shape so you can rotary cut your fabric. Okay, You'll get a design sheet of how to put it together. And you can make these designs as big or as small as you want. You may want to create a cushion or a bed runner, or you may want to make it into a large quilt. 
it's up to you what you want to do with it. You can make it as large or as small as you want. But these are a great way for you to get started on your English paper piecing journey and quite an inexpensive way. If you need more paper, you just buy more paper to add to your design. And remember the papers are reusable if you'd like. Um, some people don't like to reuse their papers, but many people do. So um, that's your choice. So question time last week was, um, well the most frequently asked question was how do I applique a star onto my background fabric, a six pointed star onto the background fabric. So we have a six pointed star and people want to know how we're going to put that onto a background fabric. What am I going to do with all these little tails? Do I cut them off? No, you don't cut them off. You will cut them off eventually, but don't cut them off until we start. So what I want to do is go through, step by step, how you're going to achieve this applique onto a piece of fabric like this. So first of all, we have our six-pointed star. I would press it, and then I would remove all the papers from the back. So just peel back the fabric, take your papers out. Remember, I pull them a bit like a band-aid. Okay, so see, these can be reused. Some of them get ripped, but that's the luck of the draw a little bit. Just pull your points back out. Now I would take that to my ironing surface and I would press that again and make sure that all of your little tails are laying flat like that. After you've removed the papers from the back of your star, you'll take a piece of fabric, which is your background fabric, you'll fold it in half in one direction, half in the other direction and press it. That will give you your center lines so you can position your star in the right place. Turn your star so the wrong side's facing up and take your applique glue. Applique glue is one of those things that um, you use instead of pins but be really careful that you don't use too much of it. Less is more. So just a small, very small pin drop of glue to go around and I actually just glue a little bit on my seam allowance to start with on each seam and then I'll pop a little tiny bit up near the top of the star point. So just a small amount. Don't put too much on there because it's it's too hard. Now this glue is water soluble. It'll wash out in water. Take your star, turn it over. You're going to line up the point of your star on the top and the bottom with your seam allowance with your center lines and then your seam allowance here is going to line up with your center line going through the middle there. Now usually I work on an ironing surface and I would press this at that point and that would make my glue adhere much um, more quickly. However, it will dry on its own. So if you're in a hurry, like I always am, am in a hurry, I would just work on an ironing surface. So I would be preparing a number of these at the same time. So I'm just going to put that one aside and I have one here that's actually dry. I'm going to take a, um, a needle and thread. So with um, needle turn applique, so needle turn applique is actually turning the edge of your work with your needle. However, in this case our edge is already turned under so it's much easier to do it. I use um, the same needle that I use for English paper piecing. I use a milliner's 11 which is long and fine. Um, and I also use the bottom line thread as well. Now, um, the reason I use the bottom line thread is it is also fine and it will also blend with the fabrics that you're using. If you're using a cotton thread, you need to match the color of your thread to the color of the fabric that's on the top. So if you're working on blue, you need to match it to the same color. If you can't match it to the same color, you need to go one shade darker, never go lighter. However, with the, the bottom line, I can use a neutral thread and I can applique all the way around the outside with one color without changing my threads. So to start with, I'm going to take my needle and thread and I'm going to put a knot in the end and I come up in behind the seam 
in my work just like that and lose the knot into my seam allowance. Okay, I'm going to start there and we're going to work up to that point. So when you're doing needle turn applique, there's a couple of tips with it. You need to work, if you're right-handed, you need to work from right to left across the top of your work. If you're left-handed, you would work from left to right across the top of your work. Now that makes a huge difference on how your points will end up at the end of the day. Some people um, tell me they don't like applique and as soon as I work out that they're actually sewing in the wrong direction, straight away um, that can be a decider as to whether they continue with it. We get working in the right direction and it's much easier to work around. It's a natural a movement of your hand to work that way rather than work back on yourself. So we've got your thread coming out of your fabric. I'm going to take my needle, I'm going to go down into my cream fabric. So I'm going to refer to this fabric as cream and this fabric as pink. I'm going to come down right into my cream fabric, right next to where it's come out of the pink. And I'm going to lean back a little bit on my pink fabric. So that makes the needle go basically in under your work. Rather than stepping out from your work, it's going to go in underneath. So straight down next to where the threads come out into the cream, lean back onto the pink and come up. Pull your thread firmly but not too tight that it gathers. And you're just picking up a small bite of fabric along that edge. I'm going to go straight down. I'm going to come right up at that very point there. Okay. I do about eight stitches to the end, except if it's a small curve, then I would probably do up to about 14 stitches. I've turned my work around in my hand and I'm going to add one extra stitch right at that very point. And that's my anchor stitch. Now I'm going to just put my needle into my work for a minute. I'm now going to pull all of that seam allowance out from underneath. Okay, can you see all that? And we've got this big tail sticking out from underneath there. We're going to fold back the top part of my work. I'm going to take my small embroidery scissors and I'm going to trim that little piece away. What we're trying to do is we're trying to push all of that fabric into that tiny little point there. Well, I'm here to tell you it's not going to happen. You need to be trimming this back. Then I'm going to trim my seam allowance back to about three sixteenths of an inch. Okay, so it's nice and neat there. You've got it all trimmed back from behind and under there. So we haven't got so much um, to push into that little point there. Take your needle again. Now remember this is called needle turn applique. So you're turning with your needle. You don't need to get your fingers in there. You don't need to get a toothpick in there. It's needle turn and that's one of the reasons I use a nice long needle because you can use your needle without having to use any other tools and I mean we only have two hands. We've got one with our fabric, one with our needle. We don't need to be adding any extra things in there. If we needed that we'd be born with three hands. Um, so take your needle and you work with the edge of your needle and you're just going to push that in underneath. Now if you can see how my needle is, I'm working with the edge of my needle. Don't poke at it like that. All you'll do is fray what's going on underneath. Then you can pull the point out nice and tight. You're going to put a stitch right at that very point again there. And we're going to come up and we're going to travel back down the edge. So make sure all your little furry bits are sticking in there, working with the edge of your needle, not the point. And you're going to stitch exactly the same, go straight down, in under. So you're going straight down and up on an angle. And continue down the outside edge. And that's the way you're going to get nice sharp points. on your stars. Okay. And then you just continue down the side. And I keep my thumb right up next to my wig. This thumb is right up close to the fold line that I'm working with. And that keeps everything in place as I'm stitching. Okay. 
here. Well, I hope you've learned something today. I hope you've picked up a new tip or technique that I've shown you and that you can use that and uh, apply it to the work that you're doing at the moment. And just remember, you're watching Shape Up with Sue Daly and we're here every Tuesday. So stay tuned for next week because we'll be working on curved shapes. on your fabric and you place the template in front of the fussy cut mirror the template